Shadow of War had a gameplay reveal, a 16-minute trailer of their gameplay that focused in one area of the game called Saragost. And in the gameplay, it said Terror Fortress Level 192. So we'll pretty much find out what their level is if we'll be able to attack the fortress. And in that game, in that footage, 16 minutes, I was able to ride a drake. I cannot wait to ride a drake, shoot some fireballs. But also in the footage, shows the ring of power, which allows you to dominate the enemy and have them become followers. Again, the, the footage focused on the nemesis system, how it's evolved since the first game. What does now doesn't just focus on the enemies, it also focuses on your followers. Where no two players were experienced the same story with different overlords and followers, a part of everyone's team. So all three of us want to have three very different gameplay experiences. Uh, followers have their own uh, specialities in the, in the battlefields. In the gameplay footage, it showed uh, one of the followers had access to a armored cavalry. The other one was a living battering ram that was actually able to attack the fortress, which he didn't live very long. He got burned. Dude, spoilers. To Hold death. On. He got burned to death. The big orc. But followers can create loyalty, betrayal, rivalry, and friendship. And that's the one thing I'm excited for is betrayal. Like, your, your followers. Was that a heart? Yes. That you made? Aww. I was trying to. Friendship. I thought you were going to do your friendship. There we go. Uh, Mo, what was your impressions of the Shadow of War gameplay footage, the 16-minute reveal? I thought it was amazing. Um, now, I just hope that they follow through with, with whatever they showed on that gameplay on the actual game. It's six um, months out. I know, I know. But hopefully they do follow through. Um, I hope the Nemesis system works the way that they intended to. Um, because they did showcase a lot of a lot of uh, things in that 16 minutes. There's a lot. Yeah, it, just to keep your eyes peeled and just from action scene to action scene and see what's going on. I know that they had the, the um, uh, person trying to read off of what's actually going on. But there's things going on. If, like in the far left and the far right, you just got to pay attention to. Um, the the whole system was pretty intense. How at the beginning he's he's fighting the one of the the first warlord, and then he ends up showing up again. Like he's he's not out of the fucking. Act well, you knocked him off the war or off the wall. So yeah. no body. We don't know that he's dead. Yeah, Classic and I thought he died. Yeah, yeah, but I, I thought he died like immediately. And then you have one of your followers shows up. He's like, don't worry. I got you back. And as a spy. Like, as right, a spy. With the arrow. Yeah. yeah. And he shoots his arm and I was like, this is so cool. Yeah. And like I hope that I hope that it keeps continuing and that you can um that it builds off of that momentum, like it keeps it going. Like I'd like to see how it's implemented though. Do you have any choice over that? Yeah. It seemed yeah, kind of like they just showed up because they were there. So if you had built up the loyalty and the nemesis system on your side, yeah. they were there. So you were able to knock down the front gate as opposed to that side gate like they show, like we can flank them now. Yeah. Or you got your archer, or in the final battle where the cavalry comes in and he's you know he attacks that's, him. That's what I want to see. Like I want to make sure that this it's not something where okay you just um, you're setting up your army to go take over this base and then they they um, for some reason the way that you have them ordered around or something is just random. Or, yeah. You know, like it doesn't work the way that you wanted it to, and then you just got a big clusterfuck and you have to kill everybody yourself. <laughs> well, and I want to see how they how they implement other stuff. I'm, again, I'm maybe a quarter of the way into Mordor right now, so I'm a little bit behind the times, but I'm used to the open world. When they were showing, you know, selecting that fortress, it seemed like you only have the fortresses. Now, that could just be for that certain dynamic that you've decided, oh, we're going to go on a raid with my army, so maybe it only gives you the fortresses and there's other stuff to do in the world around that. But right now it seemed like, oh, it's all the fortresses, but this is the ice fortress and that's the lava fortress and that's the jungle fortress... I don't want to keep doing the same mission with slightly different graphics. and. I think the fortress is a part of the land it's the, with the overworld. Because if you notice at the end of the gameplay when they secured the fortress, the entire land in that section opens up. Opens up. Yeah. Like, uh, oh, because so it's they, their version of the forge where you... it's yeah. Opens up. So I think you're able to be in that open world... But you have to work to get to the fortress. But you're absolutely right. It doesn't show you to just go to fortresses. Yeah. I think it's going to be an open world 
game. Because at the ending, you know, depending on what you choose to, like what they what they what they were saying is, uh, if you chose one some a particular orc to be a captain, he's going to do particular things. Like he will scavenge for supplies, or he's going to bring more followers with him, or he's going to have, you know, a He's gonna. He's like a blacksmith. Whatever. Like yeah. something. He's this gonna guy uses skills. magic defenses. This yeah. guy uses. Yeah, yeah. and everything changes. So pieces. I'm wondering if that will affect the land too once you conquer it. If they do have an open world to that, which would be really interesting too, if they work off. Because the first one, do you consider the, the first one to be open world? For me, uh, yeah, yeah. I mean. Cause it's not as large. Not as large. But, but I won't spoil I, it for rich. But, but it gets you know, larger. It gets larger. But yeah, there there is a. Um, um, I think it was a start. It was there. It was there like a. I don't want to say a test run. It was for them to build on that story yeah. and be like, okay, well, yeah. this is the Nemesis system. Like it was. They still have six months. They have yeah. E three. Yeah, to and show it, some more. And see, and I'm still at the level where only because of the storyline missions does Ratbag take over as a boss or a captain right mm. now. So I haven't even got my first war chief or anything. No. I certainly haven't had time elapse where the the few that I've killed get replaced. So I don't know how that works. I'd like to see if our followers. Can get a nemesis of the followers on the other side, and all of a sudden, you know, you leave that guy in charge, and he's got the magic oh, defenses. Yeah. He ends up going against somebody that is weak against that, so he he doesn't need help. But all of a sudden, he goes against somebody else that has like a Drake, and they're burning, you know, behind him. And then all of a sudden, he calls your army in to come and bail him out of. He's going to lose the fortress. I'd yeah. like to see that kind of stuff. That would be cool. That would be pretty cool, actually. Just an idea. Like he has his own hater. Yeah. <laughs> And then maybe you build more loyalty because you you saved him at the last. You're now you're the archer. Yeah. And you're shooting the guy when he's about mm-hmm. to die and like, oh, don't worry, I got you. And yeah. now you build loyalty. Yeah. It was mm-hmm. pretty interesting though. It was, like, it was a good sixteen like minute introductory, like just to show us some gameplay, some footage. Yeah. They didn't do a Legend of Zelda where it's sixteen minutes of just riding R- through the open R- world running, through the woods, just running. Yeah. So they they cut to it, went to the fortress. You see, they did a Star Trek on that one. A Star Trek. A Star Trek. Yeah. Are we going to hit like all oh, the memes yeah. that we were hoping were made from the previous episodes? Is that yeah. what we're doing right yeah. now? I'm not going to live that <laughs> My Star Trek. Um, that's one thing I like about you get to promote your followers to be the overlord for that fortress. Mm-hmm. Was that the shocker? No. Oh, okay. It kind of shows what yeah. you're about. I'm just saying. It's PPVG for a reason. What about the shocker? <laughs> Um, get to promote because we passionately play video games. I don't that know too. what you're talking about, that Double too. Entendre. <laughs> um, Shadow of Mordor is probably my favorite game in the last six years since Skyrim. Wow, I hold it in that high regard, and I almost didn't buy it. Um, I just read, I saw the reviews. It looked interesting. Then I saw the reviews. I learned about the uh, about the Nemesis system. I'm like, that looks amazing. I need to buy it, and I cannot put it down. I hundred percented it. Played it for about. About thirty-five hours killed everyone in, in, in the in the nemesis system. You just went, that's went, not true because I got the pop up that I need to avenge one of his deaths. So wiped out everyone. There wasn't anyone alive. That's pretty cool though. I, I did like that and then I put it into the system. And it, it's funny because when you when you did, uh, I, I think it was out for like two weeks already or a week and a half or so. And then you texted me. You said, "Hey, you, we should check out this game. Did you see?" And I was like, "I read the same thing yeah. like the same day." I was like, "I read the reviews. Like it's crazy." I'm picking it up tonight, same night. I think I picked it up the same night you did, and we just dove in. Yeah. Yeah, it just it just blew me away, something that I've never played before, you know, with the Nemesis system, yeah. how each game is, is going to be different. Yeah. Um, in the same story, but, you know, how you play it, each of the overlords shows their strengths, their yeah. weaknesses, and the gameplay was smooth and just so satisfying coming home on a long day of work and just decapitating orcs for three hours. It's a satisfying feeling. Getting the hell out of everything. That was... So violent. Jeez. And in so many different ways, too. And is the gameplay similar to Batman? Or no? I can see why people would think that. Um, there's a lot in the fighting styles where it's... There's nuance to the combo system, but there's enough variation, and there are a, a couple different tricks. You know, like when you, you've charged up your weapon, you can go for an instant kill, as opposed to when they're down, you have to go over, and that takes more time, and you get that perk. So... I can see where they they have that similarity, but it it's different enough. I'll tell you that. And I didn't mind that the land was smaller. The open world is was smaller in, in Shadow of Mordor. Um, I just went all the towers trying to open up the land and yeah. just went after the all the master chiefs. Well, and it doesn't feel like it's 
Master you're, Chiefs. You're, you're that, t- yeah. <laughs> yeah. The other Chiefs. The, the other Chiefs. Yeah. Yeah. The captains. The yeah. War Chiefs. No, what's on, no, what's on my Chiefs. mind? Halo? I'm ready for Halo 6. Yeah. No, but I'm ready for Halo 6. And you're telling me there's a bigger map to be... I'm guessing when I go through the Black Gate, it'll be a little bit more opened up. But, uh, it, you know, when you're on foot, it seems like a much bigger world than as soon as you start riding one of the beasts, then... No, I zipped right through there. That was that was nothing. So I can see how you have that perspective of it's not. But when you get that perk where you're you're flying around like Batman, you can swoop through all of Gotham City. It seems like a much smaller map than when you're walking down the streets trying to find a way to get to the next location. So yeah. um, now that Zelda Breath of the Wild is released, Shadow of War is now my most anticipated game of 2017. Me personally. Wow. But to say, I've never played Red Dead Redemption, so that's probably why Red Dead Redemption 2 isn't on it, but I will be playing that over the summer to get ready for the second one. But again, Shadow of War is my most anticipated game of 2017. I know probably Red Dead Redemption 2 is probably, well, besides Mass Effect. It's up there, yeah. That's, that's my top two. I, I put in a pre-order for the Collector's Edition. They didn't even mention it, did they? No, I don't yeah. think it's official. Yeah. Yeah. For which game? For Red Dead Redemption. Red Dead. Well, yeah. you could, after they did the release teaser that you could pre-order a year in advance yeah yeah so i mean but i'm ready oh my god that's that's a game i'm ready for too both games actually i can't, I can't wait so what do you think of the strategy of how they've released shadow of war they had the quote-unquote the that was a fake leak the leak that was a planned leak and but then they had their reveal trailer and then on march 8th they had the 16 minute gameplay footage and then it's six months what do you think of that strategy? You think that's that was them gaining ownership of the the media's attention. If you think about it, a lot of the people who play Mortal Kombat are probably Bioware fans, so it makes sense when we're online looking for stuff about Mass Effect, or if we're gonna have another, you know, a, a Dragon Age Four, that you would oh look, there's a new Mordor game. It it kind of makes sense for that, and it's in that window. Like with Rockstar, you announce stuff, but you don't really show anything until it's oh, yeah. until it's up there because you want to you want to show. It. But you know from editing these, that wasn't one of those Target accidentally released it and then they threw together a professional trailer and oh well we put this together this morning since Games Gamespot was talking about it all day. IGN was talking about the leak, so we threw together this five minute teaser and two days later we're gonna have a sixteen minute <laughs> walkthrough. No, it was planned. Let's let's be honest, and it, it's fine. It's the way you want to do it. Just be honest with us. We would have we would have watched it, clicked it, and hit the like, subscribe, and commented below. <laughs> Regardless, you don't have to lie to us and, and pretend like somebody at Target needs to lose their job over this whole thing. But do you think this is what video game companies should start doing? Launch trailer a week later, sixteen minute gameplay footage releases six months later. I think they needed to show proof of concept that it wasn't just more of the same. Because you you run the risk of you're a, a one trick pony. Well, for one thing, I didn't even think that they were making a second one. To tell you the truth, I didn't. This has been a while. Yeah, yeah it's been a while. So I thought it was going to be announced last E3 for a fall release. I'm actually, glad they gave it another I year. I actually thought they they would have too, but not hearing anything, and then all of a sudden they just pop up. Oh, this is you know. I once again, I I do I do feel the same way that it was, you know, it was planned. Yeah. You know, but it, I'm glad that they. Showed something. I don't. I don't care if it was planned or not planned. Just show me something. <laughs> but sixteen was, minutes. That's a lot. Yeah. Of footage. There's a lot that they threw in. Yeah, that but every before. everybody's playthrough is unique, is what they're saying. That's. I think that's effective marketing because you're saying. Yeah. I don't care about showing it because you're not going to play this. You're going to play something similar to this where you go. I recognize that menu, but when you go through, you're like, oh, that's a different war chief. That's a different interior for his throne room. I use different tactics. I have a different army. I face different captains. That, that's them making their point of what their selling point of the whole nemesis system is. That's effective marketing, if you ask me. In, in a negative way? that No, that's not proof of concept. Oh, okay. When I say, yeah. I'm going to give you something individual, and then I go, and here you go. I'll, I'll give you half hour of the experience. You're never going to see that because your playthrough is going to be completely different because it's all so random based on every little thing that you do. You're going to have a completely independent you know, reaction experience to me, Mo, anybody else out there. So I'm going to show you what we went through just in this one playthrough, and you'll never feel like, oh, I already went through that. This, what is this, a tutorial level? You're never going to feel like you wasted your time. I do like the six months release, the reveal, 
comes out in six months. I know Fallout Four. They did a like E three. Yeah. They announced it, even though everyone knew they were making it. Announced it comes out in the fall. Gives me time. Gives me time to get there because uh, I'm gonna take a break. <laughs> After, after, after Mass these Effect. eight games that you're after playing, Mass Effect, yeah, yeah, I'm sure you'll take a break. It's a break. Oh, we'll see. <laughs> you won't take that, a break. I say that now. Then E3 hits, and I'm in fucking hell again. <laughs> <laughs> All these games with their slumber party for E3. Yeah, <laughs> we're not going to the park though. We won. <laughs> nice. I think that's the trifecta. <laughs> 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 Those are our impressions of the Shadow of War gameplay footage. Please let us know in the comments below what your impressions were.